Okay, this is Melody Lehman, and this is my um, video of procedures for the bot 2 for um, Kinesiology 4075. Um, I previously had never administered the full bot because um, during a special education evaluation or at the MDAs, the OT would report on it. Um, I assisted in sections of it. Uh, so I did assist with um, some of the coordination, balance, running speed, and agility, and upper limb coordination. Um, but I did uh, ask to observe some of the fine motor tasks that the OT typically reported on. Um, so the bot is um, administered to students that are 4 to 21. In my experience, it is not a very good assessment to use for younger students because of the fact that they need a basic level of coordination and it is very difficult for students that have yet to write their names, draw, bounce or dribble things to be able to do those types of assessments. Um, but it is a lot uh, more appropriate for older school age kids and definitely for middle school and high school. So the bot has um, an instruction manual or administration easel that goes with it. And so it can help you to navigate through all eight subtests. Uh, the eight subtests are fine motor precision, fine motor integration, manual dexterity, bilateral coordination, balance, which they have a beam uh, provided for that, running speed and agility, upper limb coordination, and strength. So, um, typically before the test, um, the teacher needs to set up the testing area, which has, um, you want to have a private gym space so you can uh, mark out a 50 foot line with a start and finish to do one of the running tests. Um, you also want to have a um, designated line for throwing that is 17 feet away from the wall and also has a mark that's 10 feet away from that. Um, you also need a table and two chairs, one for the examinee and one for the examiner. Um, before each subtest, the teacher wants to teach each task before administrating, administering the subtest. Um, and the teacher wants to ensure to follow the scoring rules, the trial numbers, and time limits for each test. The complete bot form can be done in 45 to 60 minutes. Um, typically, our district uses a short form, and that's 15 to 20 minutes, which it still spans all eight subtests, and the scoring um, is suitable and acceptable for any evaluation summary on an IEP. So typically, we don't um, put the students through a full, uh, complete form. Uh, especially the younger age kids um, due to attention span. Okay, so the first test is a fine motor precision test, which is done at the table. Um, what, um, the student would practice running their finger along the crooked path from the car to the home. Um, I can give you an example of that one. kind of hard to see. Um, so the teacher would demonstrate that and then allow the student to do it. Um, then you would actually give the student an implement to try and stay in the lines and you would say ready begin. You could also just have the student with their do it with their fingers um, but you'd want to note that in your administration uh, notes when you report the scores. Um, that's item number three. Item number six is having the students uh, fold a corner of a paper on a line. So you demonstrate it for them and then you would allow the student to do it. Okay. 
So for the sub two, subtest two, fine motor integration, um, the student would be copying a square. So first the teacher would teach the task by saying copy this shape in the box below and say square. So then they would say uh, draw this shape here and you would want to make it look exactly the same and then you would allow the student to start. So you would say ready, begin. Then um, within the same item they would be copying a star. So then you'd say now look at the star. We're going to copy this shape. Draw the shape here and then you'd uh, look exactly, try and make it look exactly the same. When I observed this, um, the eight-year-old student really had difficulty with the star. Um, they couldn't actually copy uh, the shape that was there. So subtest number three is manual dexterity. Um, item number two is transferring pennies. So you would teach the task and it actually has um, a blue kind of mat that holds the pennies and then there's a red container over to the side and you pick up the pennies and put it inside the container. So then you would um, allow the student to place three pennies in the box and then return them to their original position um, just as a practice. And then you would um, start over and say, have, um, please grab a penny and say, ready, begin. And then you would um, time them for 15 seconds. After that, you'd say stop, and you'd count how many pennies that the student got inside the container. Subtest number four is bilateral coordination. So this is one that I've done with students in the past. Um, item number six is tapping feet and fingers same side synchronized. And so you'd actually demonstrate the tasks, and you tap your feet and your fingers, um, and then you would... Um, explain to the student that they would continue doing this until the teacher said stop. So you would demonstrate that for 10 seconds and then you would show or allow the student to do that and you'd say ready begin and then after 10 seconds you would stop. You would allow the student to do a second trial um, if they don't get 10 taps within that amount of time. So you might say something like let's try again and then do it again. Item number three is jumping in place, side synchronized. So you teach the task first. Um, this one is uh, pretty coordinated because it's kind of like a scissor step um, crisscross. Um, it's best to use the lines in the gym to just help them to understand that they need to keep their feet on each side of the line to be like kind of shoulder width apart. Um, so you demonstrate the tasks, um, and then you tell the students you're going to jump until I tell you sit, until I tell you to stop. Ready, begin, and then after five correct jumps or one wrong stop, you would have the student stop. Um, you could conduct a second trial if they don't reach five jumps, um, but after about 15 seconds, um, the test would be stopped. So subtest number five is balance. So it would use uh, the line that you've put down or taped down in the gym. Um, they'd be walking forward on a line. So you'd teach the task. Um, walk on the line until I tell you to sit, until I tell you stop. So you'd actually demonstrate that. Um, when we've tested the kids, as long as their feet um, stay on the line or even are side by side with the line, um, it's considered acceptable. So after six correct steps, you can say stop, or you can allow them to walk for 15 seconds if they seem to be taking their time. Um, if they do not reach six steps, then you can try um, a second time and do a second trial. Item number seven is standing on one leg on the balance beam, eyes open. So you demonstrate this for the student. Um, they would stand on one leg and you probably would like explain to them that it needs to be their favorite leg. So it's definitely their dominant leg and the one that they're comfortable with. So you um, would time this for 10 seconds. 
they put their hands on their hip, they stand on the blue beam that's provided in the test, and then you would say, um, begin, and then you time it for 10 seconds, and um, if for some reason they can't stay on the balance beam, then you would give it a second trial. Subtest number six is running speed and agility. So item three is one-legged stationary hop. So um, it's kind of easy to have the students do this where you would have a start or finish line that intersects with the long running line um, to just give them a spot to um, stand on. Um, one thing I didn't actually say was that some you can put a target up on the wall when you're doing any of the balance um, activities and they have like a red circle that the kids can focus on. Um, but that can also be useful when they're doing um, the one-legged stationary hop. So you demonstrate the task, um, show the students how to hop up and down on one leg. Then you would tell them that they're going to do that until I say stop. Um, you time it for 15 seconds. And then if necessary, you can uh, conduct the test. Um, again, you would just count how many stationary hops that they can get. Subtest number seven is upper limb coordination. Um, so this actually has to do with like eye hand coordination, um, throwing and catching type activities. Um, this one is very difficult for younger age kids um, uh, because typically the ball that we are using is um, a small tennis ball. So dropping and catching a ball with both hands, um, you teach the task and you would allow um, the student actually to practice one drop and catch and then you'd allow them to try. So you'd say ready begin um, and then you'd allow them uh, to attempt five drops and catches. Um, when dribbling a ball, this is item number six, alternating hands. Um, first you would demonstrate the task, you could use a tennis ball. Um, which is a lot smaller. Um, I have seen some other teachers use a bigger ball just to see if it was possible for the student to complete the test. Um, so you demonstrate alternating hands back and forth. And after 10 dribbles, you would say stop, or you allow the students to go for uh, 15 seconds. If need be, you'd say let's try again, and then you would try um, a second trial. Subtest number eight. Um, this one is very difficult for little ones. Uh, item number 2A is the full push up. And so you would demonstrate it. Um, you're, you would tell them that you're going to do push ups until I tell you to stop. And then after 30 seconds, you would actually stop no matter how many they got. Um, so this one, like I said, is very difficult for younger elementary students to complete. Item number three is the sit-up. So you would teach the, teach the task of the students being bent at 90 degrees and reach both hands to the knee. So um, with my fitness testing, I have them put their hands on their, on their thighs and then their hands have to go up and over their knees for it to count as an actual sit-up. And so I use that same format because the students are used, um, used to that protocol. Um, you tell them that you're going to do the setup until you say stop, and then after 30 seconds, they stop. Okay, so um, the bot is that completes the all eight subtests. Um, it definitely gives a lot of information, but I suggest that it is um, administered in a tandem with the OT or the PT. Um, it's not that APE teachers can't utilize this assessment, it's just I've been in three different districts and um, the APE teacher typically is not the one that reports out on the bot but they do help and assist and they um, when they do report it is in a tandem with the OT so it's good to have the information but most likely they wouldn't be considered the expert at the table necessarily. Um, it does uh, evaluate both fine motor and gross motor and it definitely can help um, get baseline data to either qualify a student 
or uh, to use as um, kind of a summative assessment at the three-year triannual MDAs. Um, when explaining it to parents, I would suggest using the percentage, percentile. Um, it makes more sense um, instead of using uh, explaining a lot about the raw scores or the standard scores. The school psychologist obviously is probably going to reference the standard scores, but it's easier for parents to understand when you say, you know, this student is at the 50th percentile that 50% of eight-year-olds can typically demonstrate that task. Um, so I think that is, um, all the information uh, necessary for the bot. Thanks.